wife, my lover, my lawyer, my whole life. Hey everyone, it's the Monty Man, and you are about to take part in the experience, the strength, and the hope of this episode of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show. Three, two, one, zero. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Come here for a minute. I want to talk to you. What's the mama say? What'd she say? Bang your head against the wall. Can't find peace of mind. Brain needs an overhaul. Bonehead, brain dead, we're all the same. <laughs> you can't fix brain when your heart is in pain. Turn around, hit the ground, time to lay a burden down. The views expressed on this broadcast of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show are those of the co-host and guest and do not necessarily reflect those of our affiliates. Or the topics Cecil. and opinions on today's or show Cecil. should not be considered as medical, <laughs> psychological, or professional advice. Take 12 Radio is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Thank and now, goodness. here's your host, <laughs> The Man, The Myth, The Legend, The Monty Man. That's right. You betcha. I'm telling you the truth, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Good guys, bad boys, we're all the same. Same by grace of the name of the game. Turn around, hit the ground, turn to the right. burden down. All right, it's time to lay your burden down. That's right, because uh, you don't want to be carrying around a burden today because we're going to burden you with a topic. And uh, we're probably going to tick some people off again this week. Um, I get concerned when people go silent. Last week, I had no responses to the show, which kind of concerned me. Usually, I get a little little hate mail here and there, you know, that kind of thing. Um, uh, so, so, yeah. So, we're kind of continuing. Last week was our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. Maybe. And... <laughs> <laughs> Which we kind of spoke about outside yeah, issues a, a little bit, um, mm. kind of tagged it a little bit. So we're going to talk about outside issues this week. Uh, what and who determines what's an outside issue when it comes to our, our 12-step meeting? So um, before we get into this um, too much, I, I do want to read uh, the the what's considered the long form. That always cracks me up. The long form of a tradition which is actually a shortened version of the other form. It, it's Well, it's weird. But anyway, so it says, this is in reference to the 10th tradition. Um, do you guys know what the 10th tradition is? Do you? Anyway, this is not a test. <laughs> right? Uh, the 10th tradition is Alcoholics Anonymous has no opinion on outside issues, hence yeah, the AA that's name. What, that's what it is. That's the one, right? <laughs> that's it, right? Hence the AA name on every be drawn into public controversy. The uh, the long form says no AA group or members should ever in such a way as to implicate AA express any opinion on outside controversial issues, particularly those of politics, alcohol reform, or sectarian religion. The Alcoholics Anonymous groups oppose no one. Really? Uh, concerning such matters as they can express no views, whatever. That's the long form. So we're going to unpack that a little bit um, because there's there's a lot of things there that it doesn't say. You know, it's always good to pay attention to what is being said and also what's not being said, which a lot of us don't do because our egos get in the way. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, how are you guys doing, though, by the way? Margie, what's going on? How are you doing today? Doing good. We the camera swings over there. A busy and, weekend and did you, you guys went up to uh, Washington and did cowboy music stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So poetry too. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah. I, I reckon. <laughs> you got to hear Marv's bunny hugger poet, poem someday. Yeah, he's done that one before. We need to have yeah. you do it again one of these days. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the one with meadow muffins or <laughs> something like that? Something like that. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's good stuff. Um, okay. Well, of course, we have to do a little uh, complaining, right? That's very necessary. <laughs> It's time for the Monty Man's <laughs> Weekly Wine. I wonder where Cecil is at. Because he always <laughs> has something to whine about. Stop crying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cecil. Okay, so you know I love to throw restaurants under the bus. Um, I really don't have a whole lot negative to say about Abby's Pizza in Albany, Oregon, except for this. There's always an except for, right? So there, there was four of us after church yesterday. We went went to have uh, a large pizza, four salads, and two pops and two waters. 56 bucks. Wow. That's a little much for one pizza. Give me a break, right? The salads are almost $7 a piece. That's just a one-time go-through you know, pre-packaged dry lettuce, you know, that kind of thing. But that's not what bothered me. Um, you know, we, we knew what we were getting into when we went went there. It's one of the more higher end, as far as pricey goes, uh, pizza places. But so for a pizza and lunch that costs $56 for four people, you'd expect that the slices would be sliced properly so you could pull the slices off the tray. But no. <laughs> No, it's like one big piece. They didn't cut it all the way through. So I asked my son Cameron, I said, could you take this up and have them recut it? And you know what they did? They they gave him a spatula. And he come back with the spatula. I said, did they recut it? He goes, no, they wouldn't recut it. They just gave me the spatula and said, here, this should help. What, what's that got to do with recutting the pizza? <laughs> I, I don't I, so the weekly wine is always about things that we're powerless over that really don't amount to a hill of beans that I just like to complain about. So there you go. My pizza wasn't cut properly. Thank goodness I don't have to drink over things like that anymore. <laughs> but come on, was it a nice spatula? Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> but it, it Did didn't have like it? it didn't have like a blade on one side or anything like that. Oh. It was just a spatula. <clears throat> You know, can you cut my pizza again? It doesn't cut all the way through. Here's a spoon. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, any. Uh, you guys got anything to complain about? Anything to whine about? Oh, not really. Not really. I okay. have a little wine. Oh yeah, good, good, uh -oh. good. Give us a wine. <laughs> well, I've had this like ongoing cough for like at least two months. Yeah. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> Allergy, leftover cold, mm -hmm. or what? But. Now, with this coronavirus going around, every time I cough in public, I feel like everybody just stares at me. They are. It's so <laughs> frustrating. They are I know I do not have the coronavirus. I just have some kind of cold, cold or allergies or something, but it's frustrating. It, it is annoying, yeah. My wife's, um, the, one, the person that is her, like her assistant, right? Anybody have a cold? Anybody got the flu? She just freaking out. And she told Marcia, Marcia's just calm. She goes, I don't understand why you're not more upset about this. So and so, he's sick. He could, we, we could all die. And, and she goes, okay. That's why it's important that your heart's right with God, I guess, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Marcia's just not going to freak out about it. Uh, what are you going to do? Yeah. Right? What are you, really, what are you going to do? You know, so people buying these masks that don't do anything yeah. except for actually promote the problem because as soon as you get, a regular dust mask wet, the virus goes through it anyway. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, We'll see. You know, it's like chemtrails, right? Even right. if they are true, what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? Um, yeah. Oh, well. I, you can put it on a weekly wine and whine about it. That's what we can do. That's right. Right? That's yeah. about all we can do. All right. Um, so, I want to read this uh, This. this part of this piece. This is from the uh, A.A. Grapevine uh, from 1948, actually. Uh, this is not part of the weekly wine. The weekly wine is over. Overdone. Bye, wine. Okay. Everybody say bye. 
Bye. Bye. All right. <laughs> um, so kind of a, as a uh, segue into this topic this week, um, this article says, To most of us, Alcoholics Anonymous has become as solid as the Rock of Gibraltar. We like to believe that it will soon be as well known and just as enduring as that historic landmark. We enjoy this pleasant conv uh, conviction because nothing has yet occurred to disturb it. We reason that we must hang together or die. Hence, we take our, for granted our continued unity as a movement. But should we? Uh, though God has bestowed upon us great favors, and though we are bound by stronger ties of love and necessity than most societies, is it prudent to suppose that automatically these great gifts and attributes shall be ours forever? If we are worthy, we shall probably continue to enjoy them. So the real question is, how shall we always be worthy of our present blessings? Seen from this point of view, our AA traditions are those attributes and practices by which we may deserve as a movement a long life and a useful one. To this end, none could be more vital than our 10th tradition, for it deals with the subject of controversy, serious controversy. Tradition 10 reads, Alcoholics Anonymous has no opinion on outside issues. Hence, the AA name ought never be drawn into public controversy. But what and who determines what is an outside <clears throat> issue? And that's what we're going to talk about <clears throat> on this episode of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show when we come back. Listen to this. Turn around, hit the ground, time to lay your burden down. Hey, check it out. The best in recovery talk and positive music radio is now available on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, and Podomatic. Simply visit any of these platforms and search for Take 12 Recovery Radio. Listen and download hundreds of our shows for fun and for free. Also available at Take12Radio.com. During a rally in the evening of July 1958, dozens of gang members from the streets of New York City came forward to turn their will and their lives over to Jesus Christ, including Nikki Cruz from the street gang, the Mau Mau's. The morning after the rally, Nikki and his gang, along with other gang rivals, traded in their weapons for Bibles. This was to be the beginning of the world's largest and most effective faith-based treatment program for those living with life-controlling issues such as alcohol and narcotic addiction. The author of The Cross and the Switchblade, Pastor David Wilkerson, would commit his life and passion to working with men and women from all walks of life through the founding of the International Ministry of Teen Challenge. Well, the worldwide ministry of Adult and Teen Challenge is stronger than ever and reaching more addicts and alcoholics seeking recovery every day. If you or someone you know is in need of freedom from the bondage of life-controlling issues, visit TeenChallengeUSA.com for a center near you. And if you are in the Pacific Northwest, call 541-491-1002 to speak with an intake coordinator. Adult and Teen Challenge, putting hope within reach. <laughs> All right, welcome back. You've tuned in to what we believe the best in uh, recovery journalism here at Take 12 Recovery Radio at Take 12 Radio. Dot com on your internet dial. By the way, we are on all uh, major uh, podcasting platforms, uh, I, uh, iTunes or Apple Podcast, uh, Podomatic, uh, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, etc. And you can access all those by going to Take12Radio.com. Special thank you to all of our sponsors, uh, particularly Patrick LeBeau. Uh, if it wasn't for Patrick uh, this year, a lot of our bills wouldn't have gotten paid. Thank you, Patrick, very, very much for your contributions. Uh, Donald R. from Sweet Home. Uh, Kurt and Debbie Palmer from Grass Valley, California. Uh, Roger McDermott. And uh, uh, Descending Dove Ministries as well. Just uh, and, and many others. Thank you so much for sponsoring uh, Take 12 Recovery Radio. All right. So the topic this week, um, what and who determines what is an outside issue in the rooms of recovery? 
And uh, so we're going to we're going to I'm going to read this article from AA Beyond Belief here in just a few minutes. But let's let's talk about this a little bit. What in your opinion, Margie, let me ask you first. What do you consider an outside issue? What what's what do you think of off at, off the top of your head? Well, that's a good question. I'm I don't know if I'm totally clear on what an outside issue is in the eyes of AA, but I guess for me, <clears throat> excuse me, for me it would be um oh For instance, sometimes we have members who share about uh their <laughs> Their daily, uh, their daily uh, house cleaning, or um, <laughs> <laughs> their, uh, I don't know, um, possibly people that that share about uh, things that are totally not at all related about alcohol, um, and it, if I don't see any connection at all to alcoholism or addiction. Then I just I just feel like maybe it's an outside issue, but it's it's great it's such a gray area for me. Yeah, I mean I just I I'm just not sure exactly what is an outside issue. Okay, okay, that's an honest answer. What about you, Marv? What do you think an outside issue? You have an example of one? Yes, I do. Well, do tell. I, I don't know if it's a very good example. Oh, that's okay. Uh, to me, the major part of the outside issue is when somebody comes into a meeting. And just for an example, let's talk about religion or politics. Okay. And they're trying to influence the whole group. To, to their believe, point of view. To believe in a certain perspective about politics or religion. To me, that that is an uh, uh, outside issue. Okay. And that's trying to transfer their feelings and thoughts and and to get everybody else to agree to it, mm. but the one part of the exception for me is, uh, it's just to me it's common sense to realize that outside issues are what make people drink. Mm, interesting, and especially the new people. You know, right, not so much the people that. Have been in. Uh, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna just say five to 30. five and up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they're they're the kind of things you know. Uh, um, maybe it has something to do with their job. Maybe it has something to do with the counselor their wife is going to. And, sure. And uh, so, I guess that's kind yeah. of the way I look at it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's interesting, isn't it, that. Um, that some fel fellowship meetings will, you know, the beginning of the meeting, they'll even make the statement, we ask that you limit your discussion as it relates to alcoholism mm -hmm. or in other groups as it relates to drug addiction, right? Um, it, it's interesting. Or, or here's one that I heard most recently. Please refrain from sharing about any other issue other than your problems with alcohol. Well, here's the problem I have with that. I don't have a problem with alcohol. So now I can't share. <laughs> Good point. You know, I mean, I don't. I don't have a, I don't. I don't drink. Um, I haven't had a drink for almost 23 years. I don't have a problem with alcohol. Um, am I allergic to it? Yeah, but it's not a problem because I don't drink it. You know, it, it is the ism attached to alcoholism, which we tend to, you know, within most of your 12 step fellowships would refer to the ism as not actually being the alcohol, but, <clears throat> you know, some of the deeper issues, right? You know, um, do I have isms? Yeah, but they're not really alcoholism. They're sin issues, they're character defect isms. Uh, those kind of things. So if I'm limiting my discussion to my problems with alcohol, I'm not going to be sharing because I just, I don't have that. Many people do though, and they need to be able to share what those are. And if they're not well-versed in the proper manner of speaking, should they be shut down publicly, publicly because of it? I don't think so. Um, but, but let's, let's look at this a little deeper. Um, 
I think it, it's also very interesting what we do within our fellowships, how we will talk about trying to get people on board with you about something that really isn't related. We'll take a tradition and totally put our own spin on it and try to get everybody on board with it when that is not what that tradition meant. And so let's let's read the long form again to Tradition 10. Um, and, and keep in mind, Tradition 10 says, Alcoholics Anonymous has no opinion on outside issues. Hence, the AA name ought never be drawn into public controversy. Let me preface this by saying, um, we are not speaking for AA. I'm not even claiming any fellowship per se, in any particular 12-step fellowship. I'm just telling you what my experience has been in attending those meetings. And, um, but this radio station is not affiliated. So uh, please understand that. Um, but hear this, the long form of this tradition says, no AA group or member should ever in such a way as to implicate AA. So let, let's just look at that for a minute. If I'm implicating AA in what I'm talking about as this is AA's stance on something, that is that is an outside issue. Um, so we never want to, in such a way, implicate AA, express any opinion on outside controversial issues, particularly those of politics, alcohol reform, or sectarian religion. The Alcoholics Anonymous groups oppose no one. One could argue that. I've been in plenty of groups that oppose people. But the tradition states what it states. Concerning such matters, they can express no views whatsoever. So it's, refer it's saying that, that AA as a whole, the organization, right, um, that no member or group should come across like they are representing that AA believes this way, that way, or any such way in regarding issues other than um, alcoholism or the recovery from alcoholism. So that is that is way different than somebody sharing how upset they are with the political flavor of the day. If I'm in an AA meeting and I am so riled up over who got elected as president that I'm liable to drink, man, you better let me talk about it, right? That is not making the statement that AA agrees with what I'm saying. That's simply my, my stuff, right? So if you're going by the way this tradition is written, an outside issue is when any member or group is trying to get people to believe that this is AA's stance on this, that, or the other thing. That's what an outside issue is. So who determines an outside issue? According to Alcoholics Anonymous, the tradition does. The tradition is what it says. Now let me go on. This tradition is in a way of amplification of Tradition 5. Uh, now, Tradition 5 states, each group has but one primary purpose, to carry the message to the alcoholic who still suffers. What's the message, you guys? The 12 steps. That's the message. That's the primary purpose, yep. right? Mm -hmm. To carry the message to the alcohol still, alcoholic who still suffers. The person who's still drinking. The person who can't put the plug in the jug. To carry the message of the steps. How many times have we been to a meeting and the steps are never referred to other than in the opening statement and how it works? Yes, that's true. Right? Mm -hmm. um, we can't carry a clear message to the alcoholic who still suffers if AA is co commenting on all sorts of topics that are completely unrelated to this primary purpose. So if it's unrelated to the primary purpose, then it's an outside issue. In other words, if it has nothing to do with helping the alcoholic who still suffers, then it's an outside issue. Um, this means that AA will at AA as a whole. Here I'm talking about. This means that AA will never have an opinion on national politics, the question of whether marijuana should be legalized, and the relative merits of Buddhism and Christianity. These are just examples, right? Furthermore, no member of AA should express an opinion on what 
the short, short form of the tradition calls an outside issue in a way that suggests that his or her opinion represents AA. So you see the difference there? If I'm expressing that this, my opinion represents AA, then that's an outside issue. Mm -hmm. Not whether I'm struggling with this, that, or the other thing. But if I say this is AA's stance on this, that's what an outside issue, according to the tradition. Beyond this, tradition four. But we do have that problem. We do. Yes. We have people, and the book calls them bleeding deacons. Yeah. That will get in the middle of different controversies about what people are saying. That's an outside issue. You can't talk about that. And that's the very thing the guy or the gal drank about the night before. Right. And then you're censoring them. So we have individuals in our groups who re think they represent AA as a whole. And that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. Now, here's a piece that kind of throws a wrench in it a little bit if you misinterpret this. Tradition 4 tells us that each group can determine for itself what issues are suitable for discussion. It is unfortunate, however, that in some meetings, uh, topics related to alcoholism and recovery are also considered outside issues. And that's wrong. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah. So I'm, de I'm determining that, that um, I don't like what you're talking about as it relates to your recovery and your alcoholism. So I'm going to declare as a trusted servant or a leader, because we do have leaders, I'm going to declare that's an outside issue because you make me feel uncomfortable. And therefore I said it. Therefore it is now not only my opinion, but the opinion of AA as a whole. Now I'm producing an outside issue. Right. Right. <laughs> um, it's been, it's been heard a, a speaker meetings uh, being interrupted and people uh, saying, you can't talk about that. It's an outside issue. Uh, we've seen meeting leaders uh, told that such topics are unacceptable. There are several errors being made when this happens. First, AA as a whole may have no opinion on such issues, but AA members have both their opinions and their experiences and should be free to discuss them during a meeting. When prohibited from doing so, they are clearly being censored. An example of a bogus outside issue. This is one that is not an outside issue, but people are declaring it one, right? Might be the use of medications to help a person stay sober at the beginning or meditating or even reading non-conference approved literature. Tradition 4 says each group should be autonomous except in matters affecting other groups or AA as a whole. This means that a group has the right to determine what topics are suitable for discussion. Some groups, for example, ask attendees not to talk about drugs, which always interests me because alcohol is the number one abused drug in our world today. Yes. So if you say you can't talk about drugs, then now, now you can't talk about alcohol. Because alcohol is a drug. Right. Right. So use your head. I suppose an AA group can engage in the suppress, suppression of speech, even while knowing that their actions are unjust. But why would you do so? Why not be open-minded in a way that allows AA members to discuss whatever topic relates to their efforts to stay sober, to prohibit this smacks of cultish behavior? And boy, does it. Yes. Another result of the misapplication of Tradition 10 is that the group members are deprived of learning about matters that may be useful to them in maintaining their own sobriety or that of their sponsees. Um, our rapidly declining membership numbers tell us that our message isn't working. One reason for this is that we are not incorporating the latest treatments and therapies into our discussions. Bill Wilson used the best medical opinions that were accessible to him when he wrote the text of the big book. If he were here with us today, I have no that doubt that he would be telling us about the best medical solutions available now. But heaven forbid we bring that up. If I sit in a meeting and I, and I say, you know what? I got to tell you, 
I have been really doing well with this practice of meditation from this one meditation book I got from a from somebody from a meeting before the meeting last week. <laughs> right? Not even yeah. during the meeting. And I got to tell you, it's really helping me stay sober. I'm going to get shot down in some meetings. Well, you can't talk about that. Uh so what we got going on here is we got a tradition violation from people that think they're enforcing the tradition. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and part of what Margie said earlier struck a note with me, too, about um, it's hard. And, and I, and I kind of tongue in cheek here on this, but mm -hmm. it's hard to sit in meetings um that I go to regularly and people every day talk about the same thing, you know, whether it's about moving about their mother, their dog or, but the thing that I realize is tired as I get of hearing about that mm -hmm. stuff. And I know other people do too. Sure. It's what, it, what you said a few minutes ago while you were reading, it's what keeps them sober. Right. They have to talk. It's a, it's a big deal to them, yep. even though it seems trivial to yep. me. So God's grace got me in there, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, yeah, I'm getting sick and tired of hearing this crap. I'm leaving and all this. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but then the thought comes up, well, does God get sick and tired of hearing you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's great. So, what a so, great point. So I just keep my mouth shut. And, and yeah. the, they have to talk. That's important to them. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. But it is hard also it is. on the other side. And, <laughs> and this is where we and we hear it a lot, but do we practice it? Love and tolerance is our code. Man, we hear that come out of the mouth of a lot of people that have absolutely no love or tolerance. But, boy, they'll spout that off, you know. Yeah. But we do need to practice that. Because you know what? Even though I may have heard the same sad sack story about somebody and how sick their dog is over and over and over again, week after week, there's somebody in that meeting that's heard it for the first time. Yeah. They've heard it for the first time. And, and, and may, they're, Good the, point. And they yeah. may have an issue with a pet that is their close confidant. You know, I mean, this is, some people's pets are their best friends, you know. I'm thinking about uh, our, our our friend Mark, um, who drove a pickup truck and had he had he had a beautiful dog. I can't I can't think. It was kind of like a husky kind of thing, you know. This thing was his buddy, and when it passed away, um, Mark Mark W. When it passed away years ago, he was devastated. So now he can't talk about his dog because it's an outside issue, right? Right. I know that when I um. About a year ago, my husband passed away, and I had I came into the rooms and I just I shared the same thing for like a month, right? And uh, you know I know people are probably getting tired of hearing it, but it's what I had to do to stay sober. And sure, like Marv says, sometimes you just that's what a person needs is they they need to go into somewhere where they feel safe, you know, some twelve step meeting and um, be able to just get it off their chest and and share it and know that there's people there that are listening and that care and um yeah you know if you're one of those people listening it might it gets repetitious and and you would get tired of it but uh like like you said you know if we can try and you know i'm no not great at this but i try mm -hmm. to practice our you know love and tolerance and patience for for others then it, it really helps because you don't know what what it take sometimes to stay sober and if it's just sharing your hardships like that then go for it yeah yeah right so what's what's your what's your husband dying have to do with alcoholism right that's what some people would say yeah right yeah maybe nothing but it's directly related to your sobriety yeah, because and I your know ability it, to stay sober. Right, because at that point in time, I really wanted to drink, and I really was on, had only been sober for like maybe two months, and so to me, it was directly related. But yeah, somebody who is a, you know, I don't know, AA tradition Nazi or something, uh, they might think 
you know, we probably should go talk to your sponsor or counselor about that. Don't bring that up here. But it was important to me. It got me through that time without drinking. Right. And we don't know who's in the room who needs to hear that. Right. Yeah, you know that really needs to hear mm. that. That maybe maybe <clears throat> their their loved one is on right on the verge of passing over, right? Or maybe they're feeling like nobody understands, and all of a sudden, hey, there's somebody in the room that gets it. What I'm going through. Yeah. Um, you know when we def- when when we when we confine our discussions with our problems with alcohol, we're missing the entire twelve step program. You know, I mean, what's alcohol mentioned? What in, in in the first step? The rest of that that's that's about the symptom. The rest we don't change down symptoms in recovery. We got to recognize what they are, but then we go deeper to find out what's fueling that stuff. And a lot of that stuff that's fueling my tendency to go out and medicate has to do with things that many would consider an outside issue. And according to this tradition, no AA group. Our members should ever in such a way as to implicate AA on these issues. If I'm not implicating AA, it's not an outside issue. So stop trying to censor me. Right. It's not. Now, if you don't want to follow the tradition and, and you are a tradition Nazi, and by the way, most of them that most of them that I know, not all. But most of them that are that way, they don't really understand the tradition, nor have they read it or have they studied it. They don't have a clue. They don't like something, so they'll take it out of context, and then they'll try to put it on you because it makes them uncomfortable, which tells me, why does it make you uncomfortable? We, we do a lot of talking about, you know, if you spot it, you got it, right? If you see something in somebody else that disturbs you, maybe it's because there's something wrong with you. Maybe something's going on with you. Maybe you ought to check yourself instead of just trying to shut somebody down. Right. Um, so you talked about, Marv, you talked about last week, somebody bringing literature in or, yeah. or clothing I was, in. I was wondering. If, you know, uh, that's it just kills me. Um like I said last week, uh, AA uh, groups are not secondhand stores. True, true enough. No, they're not. But uh, in the in the idea and the realm of helping others, people are generous, and they'll bring in clothing, and it's usually, you know, good. It's not garbage. It's good clothing. Right or the or uh, another thing that goes on that I'm partial to myself is people will bring in a few books now by a few I mean maybe up to a half a dozen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they set them on the counter and other people can take them and and enjoy them and read them but we have those in in these groups who I have seen it. They literally pick this stuff up, throw it in the garbage can, and say that's an outside issue. That yeah, just, it, I just, one, that's beyond one, me. I just, one nice fellow has a relative that works for Nike, mm-hmm. and he, <laughs> he sends him shoes. He's right. got shoes out the yin yang, right? And he'll bring them in. They're good quality Nike shoes, and you know. People are, well, that's an outside issue. Come on. Come on. Talk about break. Con- talk about issues of control. Yes. yes. And um, to me, it's it's just asinine. <clears throat> Jeez. So um, th- this, uh, this article, by the way, comes from AA Beyond Belief. This is by Jerry F. He says, in addition to depression... All of us alcoholics suffer from a certain amount of anxiety. Again, the degree is highly variable among us. Anxiety and depression may seem to be opposites, but they are not. They are both the result of chemical imbalances in our brain. Anxiety is a learned, irrational reaction to fear. It is fear of fear. Since everyone in the fellowship, newcomers and old-timers alike, old-timers, alike, um, old-timers excuse me, deal with the stressors that create these imbalances, we can all gain from discussing how we are coping with them 
and staying clean and sober while doing so. Some of our members are struggling far more uh, so than, than others. From an experiential standpoint, anything that is creating difficulty for a member in attaining or maintaining sobriety is very much an inside issue. It is inside that member and it belongs inside the AA group that he or she belongs to. I like that. If it's inside you and it is hindering you from your sobriety, it belongs in the meeting. Yep. It needs to be talked about. Yep. You know, when Bill W. says we're but scratching the service, surface, this is spiritual kindergarten, that kind of thing. He left the door open. If the only piece of literature that you're putting your nose in is the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you are limiting your quality of life. I'm sorry. Not every single thing in life is covered in that book. Thank you. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, because we, you know, when you come into AA, you start working the steps and you learn that uh, this is a new design for living. Yeah. So that's going to include tons of outside issues because that's your, your life we're talking you about. So what do we t what do we say? What what you let, let's give a hypothetical here. You're sitting in a in a meeting and somebody's talking about you know I I I just once again my power's going to get shut off cuz I just can't get a job. I'm working my butt off trying to get employment. I've been able to pick up some work here and some work there but because of my past criminal record Nobody wants to hire me. I am just so frustrated and I feel like drinking, but I'm not. I'm here today. And somebody says, what's that got to do with anything? What's your job placement got to do with anything? And they stand up and they correct the person in a meeting. <clears throat> what do we do with that? Is, is that a time to stand up and correct the person who's correcting? Do we keep our mouth shut and talk to them after the meeting? Do we bring it up at a business meeting? What do you do with, with the bleeding deacon that keeps, because they're uncomfortable, they keep correcting the poor guy who's suffering. What do you do with that? Any suggestions, Marv? Uh, the only thing I can think of is that um, the answer to that problem is not to create more problems. Mm, which you might be doing if you stand up if and correct them. If you them. stand up. Uh, now, I have done that. Uh-huh. And... Uh, the guy got mad at me and left. Right. But what I would do and what I have done is I try to, uh, in our particular group, we have a break. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the end of the meeting. But I try to go to him and reassure him. Um, as a matter of fact, that just happened about a month ago with a lady that was coming in and she was talking about anxiety and depression, what you just read about yeah and going on and on and and the attitude in the room was kind of this fupa uh you know yeah tired of hearing it stuff and i right. went up to her during the break and i said hey listen i know you are dealing with a real thing it's a real problem mm -hmm. because i have been there i know and um and that's how i deal with it I did confront a guy one time. Um, we, I was talking to another member, and, and I told you about this a week mm -hmm. ago, but I was talking to another member about politics. Mm -hmm. Before the meeting. Before the meeting. Yeah. And, and he, this guy was asking me some questions, and, of course, all I can do is give him my opinions. So we were ha and it was a peaceful, calm discussion. Right. This guy comes in and he hears what we're talking about. He goes up to the front of the room. He's standing there. He opens up the 12 by 12 and quotes something out of there about, it's kind of what you read earlier mm -hmm. uh, about talking about politics and right. stuff like that. And he was looking at my friend, just glaring at him, all puffed up. And, and uh, he spilled this crap out and... My friend kind of looked down like that, and, and I got on him. I said, you listen here, mister. 
This is the United States of America. We have a constitutional right to talk about whatever we want to talk about, and the meeting has not started. Amen. And he got up, he walked out, he got mad at me and left. <laughs> but that to me is somebody trying to control. That's the uh, crux of this outside issue yeah. stuff. I mean, people take it too far. They do. <clears throat> they do. I talk too long. Sorry. Well, <laughs> no. And, 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 you know, okay. So, I mean, so I ask you guys what you thought examples of outside issues were. So, so let, let's talk about the politic thing, the politico. Okay. So if I'm sitting in a meeting and during the meeting, somebody starts bashing uh, Hillary Clinton, right? And, and says, I mean, man, I used to drink like a fish. And, you know, when I drank, I looked kind of like Hillary. You know, oh, Hillary, you know, she probably drinks too much. I mean, look at her life and blah, 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 blah. Or somebody stands up and starts bashing Donald, bashing Donald Trump. Well, look what he's done. Alcoholics Anonymous is never going to survive because that jerk is going to do away with 12-step meetings altogether. He hasn't done anything for alcoholics, you know. But it, so when I hear that kind of stuff, and it's got that, it's got that undertone of I want you to kind of come alongside me and right. buy into this with me. Yeah. yeah, that's that's an outside issue because what you're trying to do is you're trying to say. You, you know, in, in kind of a roundabout way, you're trying to say this is what AA stance is on this. We don't like Donald Trump. We don't like Hillary Clinton. We don't like, you know, Barack Obama. We don't like when that's not AA stance at all. AA, in fact, doesn't take a stance on it. Right. Right. So then it's an outside issue. But I, I'm talking about the fact that I can't pay my electric bill and it's causing me depression. That is not an outside issue. Sorry. If I talk about the fact that Man, I really need to quit smoking pot because the next thing you know, I'm going to be drinking again. Yeah. That is not an outside issue. Exactly. You know, so I don't know. Again, I think most people that that are really up in arms about this um, are people that it makes them feel uncomfortable, but it's not somebody trying to declare this is AA's opinion. Um, the other piece on this thing that I, I wanted <coughs> to discuss was, um, the, the, the fact that there are groups, um, that, I mean, well, the, the traditions basically says a group has the right to determine what is appropriate to discuss and not discuss their anonymity, the anonymity tradition, uh, or uh, the, you know, each group's autonomous rather gives you that right. So if a group says, we're, we're not going to discuss politics in any way, shape, or form, not even your opinions about them, even if it relates to your drinking, and they want to do that and they vote that in, I suppose they can do that. But I've never been in a group that's done that. I've heard people complain about it, but I've never actually been to a business meeting where people said, this is what you can say, this is what you can't say, and we're going to vote on this now. Have you? I don't think so. Yeah. I, I, I don't either. So I don't know. Um, people are who they are. People are people. So I think that the people that are just jumping down people's throats for sharing their experience, their strength, their hope, or lack of it, right? They're dealing with some very serious issues themselves. And maybe they need to take their own advice and talk to their sponsors. Yes. Maybe they you know, should. There Go ahead. are there are people who take the steps and make them outside issues. Did you know that? Explain what you mean by that. What I mean by that is they'll take either a step or a tradition. They'll twist it around mm -hmm. and and make it seem as though it was, you know, God's honest truth. Right. But it's actually a. a twisted version perception of, of 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 a step that wasn't or a tradition that wasn't what you've talked about yeah. in a roundabout way but uh, and and uh, beat on the big book and hammer that in right. and try and, and it's really an outside issue it has nothing to do <laughs> yeah. with 
the reality of the step or the tradition. Yeah. It cracks me because because I remember reading uh, reading uh, uh, page eleven uh, in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. We were having a some sort of meeting where people were reading their some of their favorite pieces of the Big Book, right? And I was in this meeting, and I read this part on page eleven where Bill W is talking about how he felt about Christ, and it was basically from some thwarted viewpoints from his grandfather who really hated church and all that kind of stuff. And he makes a statement about Christ. And as soon as I read that, somebody told me to stop reading out of the Bible. Well, I wasn't reading out of the Bible. I was reading out of the big book. Um, and then I got criticized by somebody for mentioning Christ. Christ is an outside issue. Well, it's in the book. It's in the book. So don't tell me that. In fact, there's a lot of scripture quoted in the book. There is. You know, from the book of James, from the Sermon on the Mount, you know. So how is that an outside issue? I, I, I don't know. But again, I, it goes back to if all these things are making you feel that uncomfortable, um, then maybe you got some outside issues you need some work on from a therapist or, or, yes. or, or, or whatever. But I know what you're talking about, Marv, about people that will take – They'll take a step or they'll take a tradition and they'll twist it to the point where people actually think that's AA's stance on it. And it's not. Yeah. And a lot of this comes back to, and I mentioned this last week, that a lot of this comes back to sponsorship from people, you know, people that haven't even worked the steps. They had a sponsor that didn't work the steps. They had a sponsor who misunderstood the literature. And so it's really not their fault. They've been taught wrong. And once they finally are taught properly and they open up that book and see it in context, a light comes on. Some people, a light never comes on because their ego is so big. They've got to try, <laughs> try to control the meaning. They've got to control what you say. Uh, there, there was a gal that was very popular in the community at the time. Somebody said something about, um, you know, Jesus really helped me through my third step. And she's piped up to the meeting. We don't say Jesus in this group. Really? You say grandfather, you say Buddha, you say this, that, and the other thing, but you don't say that? The person was sharing their personal experience. They weren't trying to convert anybody. They weren't saying that AA believes this. They were just saying Jesus helped them through step three. What the heck is wrong with that? Right. According to this woman, it was an outside issue. I don't see anything wrong with it. But that's another show. <laughs> Jesus and the meetings, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Any closing thoughts from either one of you scallywags? <laughs> Nope. Not me. Maybe this scallywag. Marster? Oh, I, you know, as much as people talk about love and tolerance, and mm -hmm. um, you, you sometimes, I do anyway, I'll sit there and I just absolutely can't believe what just happened or what right. was said or how somebody treated somebody else. And, and uh, even though I'm probably the most... Uh, non-social person in the room. I, I really think that we don't think enough about God's grace and what he's done in our own personal lives. Sure. And how we should uh, uh, pass that along. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just not done. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. We need some work. I, I know I do. I know I do too. <laughs> I do too. I do too. <laughs> Again, which speaks to what we talked about last week. Sometimes a group inventory is in order, you know. Um, I certainly an individual inventory is in order. And if it, you know, if the individual needs to take an inventory, why wouldn't several individuals that gather together need to take an inventory once in a while? True. You know, uh, I know of a, a particular group that, I don't think they've ever done a group inventory and they've been around longer than the traditions have been around. So I don't know. I think it's a healthy thing, even if nothing's wrong. Right. To kind of give yourself a well, spiritual the, enema, if I may say that. 
Yeah, and I think part of the problem, me included, is is uh, I don't know that a majority of people take that kind of stuff to heart. Right. Um, and and they again uh, they hide behind. They use the steps as a hammer. Mm. You know, and, and I don't know. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad. That's for yeah. sure. I wouldn't discourage it, but. I, it just, I kind of wonder about stuff like that. Sure. And sometimes that's when you need somebody f- that's objective, somebody that can come in, you know, a representative, you know, that's in leadership or a trusted, like a DCM or something. Somebody right. that can come in and really doesn't know personalities. They just know that there's an issue and hit the reset button and go from there. But, exactly. you know, bottom line is God's in control. He's still in control. He's never lost control. And, you know, the good Lord is in those rooms. Yep. You know, all our character defects and warts included. He's right. there anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> all right. So we're going to close out uh, this show. We played this song before. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it is by Michael Purrington uh, and his band, The Messengers, uh, from the same uh, CD as last week's. Uh, and this one's affectionately titled Outside Issues. Um, we played a little clip opening the show up. Um, so it's a tongue-in-cheek thing. Again, remember Rule 62. Don't take yourself so seriously, okay? Because this will, this song will tick you off if you're taking yourself too seriously. Here's Michael Purrington with Outside Issues. The first time I went to a meeting, they said anything that ain't about drinking is an outside issue. Outside issue. It's an outside issue. Outside issue. Oh, it ain't in the groove, but it ain't conference up. I wanna talk about dope, smoke and blow. They shook their heads, said no, no, no. job i can't make my rent they said i'm sorry son unemployment is an outside issue Turn me apart It's an outside issue Outside issue It's an outside issue That's Mr. Michael Purrington and his band, The Messengers. Hey, listen, for more great recovery music, including Michael's music, visit our website at take12radio.com and click on the Recovery Music banner. There, you'll be able to download just a plethora of great recovery songs from the best of recovery recording artists. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man, along with the Take 12 Recovery Radio family, And we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you.
This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Cause she's a super cat, super cat, she's super kitty, meow. Yeah, kitty, 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 meow. <laughs> <laughs>